All right, good morning, everyone. So I think it's going live. I'm just gonna give it a second here to make sure that it pops up on my end. How is everybody this morning? Good morning, Lisa, nice to see you here. Um, okay, yeah, we're, we're going, we are good to go. So we're gonna be doing this botanical flower today, and I've got the line art down below for you guys if you wanna follow along. And I should have the list of colors that I'm using as well, and I've got the reference photo on screen here for you, as well as down in the description, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it, and as always, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I did just lightly uh, go over top of my sketch with my kneaded eraser, just to lighten it a little bit. But I'm going to start off with this uh, cream color 102, and this is from Faber-Castell. So I'm using a mix of the Faber-Castell and Prismacolor, um, but use whatever pencils that you guys have. And Lisa says she's looking forward to watching. <laughs> thank you, Lisa, thank you very much. So I just wanna put a little bit of a yellow undertone down here in the stem. So I'm just gonna start by keeping this more towards the outside and I'll put a little bit over here as well. And I'm just going with a light hand And I'm gonna take this color maybe not quite halfway across the stem. And I've just got this uh, spare piece of paper here just to cover my paper where I'm laying my hand down. I can't find my glassine paper <laughs> this morning or I would be using that. And I do apologize if the cat starts meowing in the background. He's been sort of wanting in and out of the art room uh, this morning. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if he'll settle down or if he's gotta go again. I'm gonna get a little bit up just around this edge, almost where there's like a, sort of like another little light off on this side a little bit. Not quite all the way down, I'd say maybe about a little more than halfway down. And then I'm just gonna lightly glaze this color just right up where the green is gonna end. Now I did draw this flower a little bit bigger than I normally do with colored pencil pieces. So this is an eight by 10. So I did it a little bit bigger because there's not a whole lot of colors going on in here. I figured we would finish this, you know, hopefully within um, two sessions, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that light green 171 from the Polychromos again, and I'm gonna fill in this whole stem part with this color. And I'm going right over top of that yellow color as well. And I wanna be very light up here where it's gonna transition into sort of a little bit of a yellow tone. Very light. And then I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the stem here with this color. 
Then we'll come in with our darker green. And I'm trying to go in little small circles with this as well. So it might look like I'm just um, just scribbling, but I am trying to keep it in little circle oval shapes uh, just so that I fill in the, the tooth of the paper more evenly and it'll blend out a little more evenly as well. And again, I'm just using a light to medium pressure. I'd also love to hear your suggestions, uh, whether you're watching this back or if you're here live with me. Um, if you want to leave either a comment in the chat here or down below uh, in the comment section of what uh, you think we should do next. So once this flower is done, what, uh, what would you like us to do next for our next live tutorial? So I'm going to go ahead and grab this olive green 911 and this is a Prismacolor one. Oh, good morning, EB. Nice to see you here. How are you today? And I'm going to start filling in the darkest area. So there's a little shadow over here, but it doesn't quite go down all the way. It's right at the edge. I can see it and it might go down maybe just over a quarter of the way there. And then it sort of like comes across and then goes down this section here. So that's where I'm gonna put it. Oh, good morning, Corey. Nice to see you here as well. How are you today? Are you feeling any better? I know you've been feeling a bit better, but I'm hoping that you're feeling a lot better. Oh, a lot better? Okay, perfect. I'm glad to hear that. So there's like a there's like a light area here and then just a slightly light area here. So I want to make sure to leave that. We can always go back and darken it up if we need to. So I want to make sure that I leave this part in sort of about right in this area. And I'm going to get this darker green. So where the little stems of the petals start, I'm going to get that dark green just up towards there. as well. Um, Corey says, yeah, I still have um, no, no energy, I think, and can't taste or smell, but mounds better than last week. Okay, well, that's good. I'm so glad you're feeling better. And I'm just going to continue getting some of this dark color in here. Yeah, I can't imagine what it would be like to actually have COVID. I can't imagine at all. 
and I would never wish that on anybody at all. So I'm so happy that you're starting to feel better. Now I'm gonna to try to take this down pretty much straight to here and then fill in this whole uh, little section here with this darker color. Yeah, energy. Uh, I know, I want my Thanksgiving food to taste like food. Oh, no. So I know the States has their Thanksgiving coming up, but I don't remember exactly what weekend that is. But, uh, oh, I hope you get your taste back by then. And I really want to make sure I get some dark pigment in here. There. And I might even go back in with that um, light green 171 from the Polychromos and just go over these light areas again, just to make sure when we go to blend out that we've got enough pigment down on the paper. And it's going to blend nicely. And again, I'm not pushing hard, just light to medium pressure um, because I do like to build up my layers that way. It's easier to go darker, but it's hard to go lighter once you get too dark. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Okay, it's always the last Thursday of November. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to go ahead and blend out that stem. And I've just got to grab my Odalis Mineral Spirits here because apparently I didn't have them out ready to go, <laughs> even though I use them all the time with colored pencils. But I've just got them. So I don't know if you can see, but I've just got a paper towel over here and I'm going to have my Mineral Spirits off to the side here. And I just take a Taclon brush and I dip in and then I go to blend my uh, colored pencil with that. And I'm going to blend the lightest areas first and I'll blend into the darker areas. Because I don't want to pull too much dark into the lighter areas at first, so I always blend light to dark. And if you don't like to use Gamsol, you can just keep building up your layers, just the same colors that we used, or you can go in with a blender pencil and blend that way. I would still blend pretty lightly um, because then you can always go over top if you need to add some more colored pencil in. So I'm just going to quickly blend this out and then we'll start on our petals. And the reason I'm going ahead and blending this out now is because I don't know how far we'll get today with this, but if I have a chance to, to come back and lay some more pencil over top of this if I need to, then um, it will have time to dry because you want to give your odorless mineral spirits a good 15, 20 minutes to really dry before you go back in and add any more pencil over top of it. I'll probably go back in and do another layer here afterwards because I think I do want to build up a little bit more darkness in there but we'll see I'm going to blend this edge just a little bit 
more. And I might have to add a little bit more darkness over there because I feel like it's not quite as strong of a highlight, but just for a first layer, that's that will do. So let me just check chat here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, EB says um, she got most of her ornaments done and uh, I'm going to be selling them. Another 90 today you're going to be doing. Okay, my shop should open up this weekend. That's exciting. Oh, hi, Miranda. Nice to see you here. Thank you for joining. And Corey says, I really like OMS because you can layer on top with white well, blender, blender pencils take out the tooth. Yes, absolutely. That's why I like using the OMS too, um, because I can just keep layering and layering on top. Yeah, she already did, I think, 90 last weekend on her stream last weekend. So I'm just taking that cream uh, 102, and this is the polychromos one. And I'm going to start getting this down here where we've got some lighter yellow tones. And I want to make sure that I'm going in the direction of the petals. So whichever way it's going, because some of these do have a little bit of streaky texture in there. So if it ends up getting a little streaky, then we want to make sure that we're at least going in the direction that we want it to be going. And I'm just going to start laying this color in pretty lightly at first, and then we can always start to build it up. And how's everyone's weekend going so far? I hope it's going well. And I'm just gonna do some little lines here just to help it blend into the, uh, the petals where it starts to get darker. Now this might be so light that you're not able to see it just yet, but it is there, I promise. <laughs> uh, Miranda says, great weekend so far, that's awesome. Um, EB's been busy creating, need to make videos for YouTube for the week. Yeah, I really enjoy watching your sped up videos to see what you've been creating on your streams. So there's a little bit of uh, white here, like some lighter areas, so I'm not going to put this color completely in that area. And I can see this yellow comes up a little bit here into the petal, so I'm going to get that in a little bit over here. And on this back petal here, I can see quite a bit of yellow here, so I'm going to go in a little bit more concentrated with the color. <clears throat> Kiwi's been slacking on the, the videos. That's okay. You've been busy. You've been very busy. And I'm just gonna get a little bit down here as well. I don't see too much here, but just so that it's uh, cohesive with the other petals. And I'm gonna start building up just a little bit more down here at the base of the petals. especially along this one because we've got that uh, brighter edge here we need to make this back petal a little bit darker and Miranda says I need to make a video today as well what are you gonna be doing today Miranda painting I'm assuming but uh, do you know what you're gonna be painting yet So 
So I'm just trying to build up a little bit of this yellow color where I'm seeing it. Um, EB says, Naomi, I'm probably not streaming today so I can get my videos done and start painting the next 90 ornaments. Okay, yeah. And Colorfully Optimistic or Corey says, I have a backlog of video ideas too. Um, I hope I can catch up this week. Yeah, sometimes I just have so many ideas that I just can't get them all filmed at once. Um, I'm going to be taking the Light Peach 927 from Prismacolor now. And Miranda says, I'll be painting the cover of my camper journal. Oh, nice. Very nice. So I'm going to bring this color in sort of as like a transition area into where the, the pink areas meet the yellow. So I'm sort of doing, when, when I get into the yellow, I'm doing more like little streaky lines to let them meet. But I want to keep this light too. And I can see some pinkiness here. Now I'm also putting this pink a little bit in some of the shadow areas as well, just to help deepen them up. And I can see it a little bit along this bottom edge of the petal here too. Um, EB says, yeah, I just think I'm in an art block, but you're gonna try to catch up. My work schedule is crazy and long hours. Yeah. Okay. And again, a little bit over here, but I wanna be pretty careful and make sure I keep some of this light area, but I do see a little bit of pink around it. And again, I'm trying to keep in the, the shape of the petal, so where those little striations are, I'm trying to follow that. Um, I got my hair done this past Thursday. Ooh, did you get it cut or did you get it colored? Like, what did they uh, end up doing? can see a little bit coming down here. Um, Miranda says, sorry I have to run, but glad I could catch a little of your live stream. That's okay, Miranda. Thank you for, for coming and saying hello. I very much appreciate it. Cut color, I have rose gold in my hair. Oh, that sounds very pretty. And again, I'm going to take it here on this petal. Yes, please send me a picture. I would love to see it. Absolutely. 
Now I'm going to take this color up a little bit along here. It's a little bit of a lighter pinky tone, just where that the edge of the, the petal is. So I'm going to follow this up there and get that in. And I think I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser quickly and just lighten the edges of these petals up at the top just a little bit, especially where we've got some lighter areas. And then I'm just going to lighten a couple of these in here. I don't want to get rid of too many marks so I can still like tell where I'm at, but I want to get rid of a little bit. And I'm going to start using this color as a little bit, um, no, actually that's a little too peachy for me. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the 199. This is light magenta from Faber Castell. And I'm going to start getting some of the lighter tones in with this one, I think. EB says, I was thinking about getting my nails done. Ooh. So I'm going to start at this petal and just work my way over, just uh, blocking in these lighter tones here. So I want to make sure that I save some white space here, but I'm going to start getting this in. And I'm doing it sort of in like little... Uh, stripey motions too as well, but it doesn't have to be perfect right now because we are going to blend this out. But I want to make sure I save some of those lighter areas, so I'll probably put all the lights in. Then we'll go back in and put our darks in. And then we can work on our midtones, just so that we get the form of the flower right. So it's going to look weird and sketchy for a bit, but trust the process. <laughs> and this one's pretty light back here. So I'm going to get that in. And there's like a little bit of a uh, little bit of darkness right on the edge here where the petals like curling a little bit. So I'm going to make sure I get some color in there. And same here, there's some light here. So I hope this is showing up okay for you guys on camera. I am putting like light layers down. but I wanna make sure I keep those light areas. Oh, hi, Brianna, nice to see you here. How are you doing today? And then there's like a little lighter area that comes off on this side as well. And it sort of meets down here. I see it just fine. Okay, perfect, thank you.
and there's like another light area here so it's sort of like got a darker spot here and then a little light area that comes around this way now one thing I really like about botanicals is you don't have to be a hundred percent with them so if you get the the petal a little bit misshapen or you know if, or if sometimes if you're even missing a petal or something like that now this where there's only so many petals it would look weird if you're missing a petal but you know if you mess up a flower nobody's really going to know because every flower is so different so that's why i really like um doing botanical art and it's great for beginners because of that Brianna says, I'm good. It's game day and I was able to pop in for a live. Okay, what are you going to be um, playing today, Brianna? What kind of sport? to get a little bit um, so it's sort of light on either side here now I probably could even sharpen this pencil up a little bit more so I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen this real quick oh and now I may have sharpened it too much they're really easy to sharpen these polychromos. Um, I don't play anymore, just watching some NFL football today. Ah, okay. Well, that's still exciting. So again, I wanna always go in the shape of the petal. So our curves were going this way and now they're going up this way. So I wanna make sure that I'm capturing that. And again, this is just a transition into the lighter tone, so. So it sort of comes up like this way. And I'm just going to start getting a little hint in up the edge here. I don't want to take it down too far. like that and then I'm gonna start getting this lighter area in here As we get up this way, it just ever so slightly starts to curve the other way. So I'm gonna start getting that in. And just bringing these two points down to meet, but so I'm still keeping some light in between.
Um, Brianna says, did your orange cupcake in procreate and learned a lot from watching you? It took six hours for me, but I'm extremely pleased with it. Oh, that's exciting. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm just going to get a little bit of this pink color down here too, just in this uh, transition area. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna bring it up here a little, sort of like a light area coming into the middle. So I know it doesn't look like much yet, but We've got to do some layering. Okay. And we've got a little bit of a light edge here, not too much, but a little. So I'm gonna sort of use this color right along the edge here and just uh, pop that in now. And here I'm just laying in the base color, not worrying about making those little marks. I can always make a little bit coming from there if I want, but I'll use my dark color to go into this area to create some of those marks too. So I'm not too worried about this um, part here. E.B. says she's lurking, working on her videos. That's all right. So I'm getting this color in down here and a little bit right on this edge as well. Then I'm going to work up here. So this is held in there and then I'm going to create sort of that lighter area. And again, I'm making sure these lines are curved. I don't know if you guys can hear the cat there, but I may have to go ahead and let him out. I think he wants out, so I'm just gonna take one second and let him out. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just gonna get a drink of water. So I'm just going to bring this color up a little bit more on this side. He sounds cute. Yeah, he is. He, uh, sometimes he just can't decide if he wants to be in or out. <laughs> so he does this uh, 
this little meowing thing and then he'll probably meow again after to come back in. But I mean, how can you be mad at him for it? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring just a little bit more of this color up. All right, so I think I like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, magenta here from Prismacolor. And I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and get this sharpened a little bit. He is very cute, yeah. And I'm gonna start getting in some of the darker areas and then that'll help us place all of our petals and then we can go in with our mid-tones and sort of make it look a little better. So this is not quite my darkest color yet. I still have another color that I can go darker with. Well, a couple colors that I can go darker with, but I just want to start to get um, some shape in here. Brianna says, my cat used to always sit on my textbooks or laptop when I tried to do college. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of that way too. He just likes to be right in the middle of everything. Like he's got to be the boss, you know? But that's okay. So I'm going to kind of fill this area in here a little bit. And I can see sort of a darker color coming down here. And then I'm gonna start doing some of those little flicks to sort of get the colors to transition. And I'm turning my pencil around so that I keep the uh, tip on my pencil better. And again, I'm always trying to go in the, the direction. <laughs> then I'm just going to go along the edge of this petal. Because there is a little bit of a darker area sort of like just underneath of it. So just on the other side. So I'm just following the outline of this petal here. And getting that in. Then I'm just going to start working on the next petal a little bit. And wherever I see this sort of like bright magenta-y color, like that's where I'm putting this. And a 
little bit. I can see it sort of coming here in the middle. Not quite all the way down, but where I left that space. And a little bit in here, so there's sort of like this curve and the petal. And I'm gonna use this magenta color to get this in here. I'm going to hit the top side of this petal where I see that dark area, not over the whole petal, but about till there. Maybe I'll bring it out just a little bit more here. And then I'm gonna take some in this area as well. So I sort of see it coming around this way. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of quiet today. Apparently I don't have too much to talk about. And then I'm going to start getting this darker area in here. So it kind of comes down like this. And sort of off to the side. So I'm going to fill in this little area here because it's pretty dark. And then I'm just going to start creating some of those lines from there. and a little bit over here. Laying a little bit of this magenta down in here. Just 
just as a light layer. And then over here, it's even a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab my 133 from my Polychromos. Now this is magenta as well. But as you can see, the magenta from the Prismacolor and Polychromos are quite different. So the Polychromos one has a little bit of purple in it. So I'm going to use that to get um, the darker area here. So it kind of comes down. Down like that and then I'm gonna go back with that magenta and just go over top I'm laying some down here as well. So I'm keeping my pencil strokes in the direction of the petals, even though I'm laying it in pretty messy here. I'm going to go over top once we blend everything out and create some more textures. Just want to get some pigment down. Okay, and I'm going to take this color. I'm actually going to sharpen this a little bit again, just so that I can uh, keep a nice point for some of this. And I'm going to come over here where this petal um, starts to curl over. I'm going to just push a little bit harder to get this edge here. And just right up to about there. And then I'm going to start filling in some of this color here because it's quite dark in here as well. And again, when I want to transition the colors together, I'll do those like uh, little lines. And I'm trying to curve them in the direction that the petal's going. And then I'm going to fill in most of this with this color. about down to here. So you can see because the the flower that I drew it out so this is an 8 by 10 it is going to take a little bit longer to do because it's a little bigger um, the last one I did was a 5 by 7 the cupcake but we're going to be able to get uh, much more detail in this 
and it would be hard to get some of those like areas in the petals if we went too small with this. So again, I'm just gonna just lightly transition this color down here because it's a little bit more like fuchsia, like a pinky color down there. And on the outside as well. So I think I'm gonna leave that color and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my um, 944 I think and this is processed red and this is sort of like a brighter pink color and I'm gonna get in some of the pink areas that I see so sort of like transitioning between this color and where that lighter uh, pink area is gonna be. And once we get our darker areas in, I can come back in and like fix up these highlights because it's not all gonna stay white here. But I just wanted to know where my highlights are gonna be so that I don't lose them completely, if that makes sense. And I want to make sure I get enough pigment on for when we're going to blend out too. So I'm making sure that I go over this quite a bit. And I'm also going to put a little bit of this on the edge of this petal here. And all these layers and different colors that we're using are really gonna help, you know, bring our flower together. So it's a little lighter up there, so I'm gonna keep this color away from there for right now. And I'm gonna grab this um, Faber-Castell 123. This is a uh, fuchsia. And I just wanna see how I like this color. I'm gonna put this in here it's like a very light pink. And I think I like that for some of the areas too. So I think I'm gonna use this a little bit closer to our lighter areas as well. It's just a very nice light pink color. So some of these areas, I'm gonna put this one in as well. So I'm slowly getting the lighter areas like less and less as I'm coloring. 
because I'm starting to get in some of those darker areas. But we will come back and put some lights over top afterwards. And again, I'm going back to that 944. Okay, and I'm going back to that light one, one, two, three from Polychromos. And I'm just going to lightly add a little bit more color into here. Oh, good morning, Alexis. How are you? Um, I'm finally stopping by for one of your live streams. Nice to see you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that uh, 994 from the Prismacolor. Start getting a little bit of this darker pink in here. How's your weekend going, Alexis? Okay, and then again, when I want to transition those colors, I'm just going to do that like flicking motion here. Um, I'm doing well for 8 a.m. on Sunday. Tulips are my favorite flowers, by the way. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I loved this one when I saw the reference photo of it. I just thought the colors were so pretty. And again, just lightly transitioning down. And I'm gonna go in with that uh, magenta color and just get it a little bit darker around um, this petal edge here. Just so that I don't lose that, uh, that edge there. making it a little bit darker. Um, Brianna says, I'll be popping in and out while I run errands. Okay, no problem. I'm just gonna be working along here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take that uh, fuchsia one, two, three color. And again, I'm going to put this closer to my lighter areas for a little bit of a transition here. Again, 
and just trying to follow the direction of the, the petals. And then I'm gonna use this color down here on the bottom to transition into our lightest area. And then I'm gonna take that 994, which is a little bit more of that brighter color and get this in here. And again, I, but I am gonna come back and get a little bit more uh, darks in here before we blend out as well. Okay, and I'm gonna go with that lighter pink here. Oh, and that's the dogs downstairs barking. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Um, and then again, I'm going back to that fuchsia color. And I'm going to get a little bit up here. I see a little bit of this color up here. And then I'm going to get it down here as well. And then I'm just going to just lightly transition this down into the lighter colors. <laughs> the studio assistants, yes. Yeah, the cat was in here earlier and then he decided that he wanted to go. So he's, uh, he's down there too doing something. Okay, and then I'm gonna use this color for the back side of this petal, but I wanna make sure I maintain this edge here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take my white polychromos, and I'm just gonna lightly burnish just along this edge here. Now I've already put a couple of pink colors down, so it's to blend out, it's not going to, um, we're not gonna lose some of those colors. Just there. And then I'm gonna go back in with that 994. And actually I'm gonna sharpen this up a little bit because that is a, a small area there. There we go. grab my brush and get any uh, little pencil parts off and I'm gonna go ahead and line the outside first since I've got this nice sharp edge and then I'm just gonna fill in And I'm trying to keep this very light edge here that I put in. And then I'm even gonna come back with that uh, magenta and just get this in 
right along the edge where the, the lightest part is, just to create a little bit more depth there. Okay, so now I want to come in with a little bit more darks, so I think I'm going to go ahead and grab this 931, which is dark purple, and I just want to get this in a couple areas just to get a little bit more dark in there, so you know what, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this one up as well. Just give me one second here. Little bit more and I'm just using my Derwent uh, Super Point Mini to sharpen these. I find it does the, the best job to sharpen them to a nice fine point. And I can see a little bit of purple over here along the edge. And sort of along here. And I'm just lightly, really glazing this color over because this is quite a dark color. You can always come back and add more, but I don't want to add too, too much right away. I just want to start to get some, some form in here and then we'll go ahead and blend. And I'm going to get a little bit of this up here too. a little bit of this right in here. And again, I'm trying to go with the curve of the flower. Or of the petals, I suppose. <laughs> a little bit up here where that petal's curving back. And then I'll have to go and fill that in. I think I'm going to fill that in with the magenta because it's not quite that dark, but it's still a little dark. I'm just going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to run a little bit right under the edge of some of this petal here. just to really help darken up some of this. Just a little bit on the side here. Just a little bit there. So I'm not covering, covering all of the area where I put the magenta, just a little bit.
And then I'm going to get some of this under this petal here that's uh, curling. And having this nice dark area in here is really going to help make that stand out a little bit more. just lightly bring that color down So those are our, like darkest areas in there. And I'm just gonna go back with that uh, 119, that lightest area that we were using. And just make sure that I've got a little bit of pigment in here in the lighter areas where we're gonna blend it out because now this is acting as our lightest area. And I'm still not covering like the whole area, but I'm lightly like glazing over a lot of it. I want to make sure when we go to blend out that we've got enough pigment down and since this is our lightest color that we're using we can use this to sort of help lay down a little bit more uh, pigment in the areas where it's a little lighter And just ever so slightly, I'm going to get the back side of the petal here, just that top part, and just lay down just a hint of that color there. Okay, and I'm going to go in with that uh, magenta and just get this, uh, there's like a dark area in here. So I'm just getting this in. And I'm just gonna use um, this color to fill it in. It's pretty light. I might grab a little bit of that one, two, three uh, from the Faber-Castell and just create a little bit of shadow alongside of this petal here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Prismacolor white and all I'm going to do is just lightly glaze over these light areas um, everywhere here just to get some pigment down. Even though it's just the white colored pencil, it's still going to help everything um, blend out nice and smooth and then we'll go ahead and blend and Corey says I need to cycle router be right back no problem <laughs> of 
So I'm not pushing hard or anything like this. I just want to get some pigment down. And because I don't want to completely cover my white areas, this is just going to help um, these lightest areas in here blend. Because if you don't have enough colored pencil down on the paper, it's not going to blend out. So this is a little trick. Um, if you want to blend lighter areas but you still want like that nice transition with your um, odorless mineral spirits might even put a little bit up in here too And then I'm just going to wipe that off and I'm going to go over down here in the lightest area as well just to make sure we've got enough pigment. Then I think we'll go ahead and blend everything out. You can see it's not really like lightening the colors. It's just like adding a little bit more in there. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bigger brush now and my odorless mineral spirits. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend and I'm gonna blend from the lightest to the darkest areas like I normally would. So I'm gonna start down here and I'm going to blend this yellow area out but I'm not going up into the pink just yet and if I need more I just dip back in And I might actually need to add a little bit extra OMS to that. It, it feels like it's starting to dry out on me. So I might go ahead and do that when I'm done this stream. But I hope you can see how this is really starting to blend some of these colors together nicely. And it almost like blends them together like they were paint. Like it's really cool how the OMS affects the, the colored pencils. 
I absolutely love it. So I'm just wiping off the excess uh, pigment on my brush and then just going back in. And now I'm blending this pink down into the yellow. So this is gonna take a little bit to blend. But it's definitely worth it. But I think you guys are able to see how we're starting to get some really nice contrast, a little bit more than what we did have. Yeah, and I definitely think this is getting a little dried out, so I'm definitely going to have to add some more OMS to it. And I might actually just go grab my bottle in a second because um, it's going to make it a little easier to blend out if I just uh, dip into it a little bit. So I'm just going to go grab that real quick. And I'm just gonna see if I can just lightly off camera add a little dab to my thing. So I just take my OMS from my big bottle and I just pour it into this little one. And as you can see, it just got the pad a little more saturated. So if you can see it there. And then I just keep my cover on it while I'm grabbing it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit and this is just gonna help it blend a little bit better. Because I think mine was just starting to get uh, dried out a little too much, just from using it. So 
So I think I really like that added uh, purple in there. Just really helps it pop. And if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, please feel free to ask because this doesn't take too much comp concentration and it's just sort of a, a repetitive thing. So I do apologize for that. So has anyone started their Christmas shopping yet? I've gotten a couple of things, but I'm always like a last minute shopper, it seems. We're getting there. You know, this is very relaxing too, like just blending out the colored pencils. Like this, it can just be very relaxing and So I'm just gonna get into the lighter area here. Cause 
I want to make sure that I keep that nice light edge that I've got there. Hi, Terry Lynn. Good morning. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining. This is sort of the, the boring part, but once we get this all blended, then, uh, then the fun part happens because then you get to do the details, which is always my favorite stage. So how's your weekend going, Terry Lynn? Have you done anything fun or unexpected this weekend? Um, you're doing good, you're very welcome. Just softening this edge a little bit here just by going over it. Yeah, I really like the added uh, purple in, in this. It definitely gives like a little pop of color. Now I want to wipe this off really, really good before I go in and get some more OMS because I'm going to do this lighter edge up here. Um, you've been coloring the Lunar Chronicles, doing hugs on 30 days of creativity. Oh, interesting. I hope that's going well for you. I've not heard of the uh, Hugs 30 Days of Creativity. And I want to make sure this is nice and blended here. And then I'm just going to do the outer edge here. Um, it's a Chris Riddle Rydell, uh, 30 Days of Creative Creativity by Joanna Basford. Oh, okay, I've seen that book by Joanna Basford. I just didn't know that um, it was also 100 Hugs is by Chris Rydell. I haven't heard of that one. So I'm just trying to blend out along the darker petal edge here and trying to keep that lighter area. And I will go back and slightly blend that spot out. I'm 
but I want to make sure I keep um, that area as light as possible because it's going to help with the form with the little petal curving over. So I'm actually going to get a much smaller brush here and this is just a pointed Taclon brush. And I'm just going to go in and just hit this edge just ever so slightly because that will still help uh, like melt the pigment down in the, to the paper so I can still go on and get like a brighter edge here. There, just like that. Okay, so that's like our first base layer. Now let me see here, it says I'm on day 87 of the hugs. I'm almost done with the book. It'll be my first completed book. 14 hugs to go. So are the hugs like drawings that you do or something? Like I've never heard of this. I'm gonna have to look this up. Mm. <clears throat> so I'm pretty happy with our base layer here, but we're gonna have to go ahead and let the OMS dry. So I think this is as far as I'm gonna be able to go today. I could go, we could go in and do the stem a little bit because the stem has already dried. So actually maybe I will do that. I'm gonna take this light green 171 and the olive green 911. So this is Prismacolor, this one's Faber-Castell. And I'm just going to start laying in a little bit more uh, color in here. And I've got to bring the darker color in a little bit as well. So we'll get this darkened up a little bit and then we'll blend and then we'll probably be done with today. And then we'll most likely finish it next weekend. So let me know what you guys would like to see um, for the next live stream that we do. Um, and I'm also in the process of filming some Patreon tutorials. Um, I'm taking that darker color now and I'm just going to fill in this darker area too. So I'm hoping to be able to start my Patreon in December because when I put that poll out um, you guys were interested in having some extra tutorials on the side. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I hope you guys are still interested in that. Terry Lynn says, yes, the book is just different people or animals giving hugs, just two person in the picture. I'll show you um, a message on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see that. So I'm darkening this up again, but I've got to bring some of this dark color over a little bit because the highlight's a little too uh, stark over here. Oh, you sent it. Okay, I'll make sure to check that out afterwards. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm just going to glaze a little bit over this lighter area too, just bringing in that highlight just a little bit. And then I'm just going to take this green color, the darker green, and just lightly 
go up these little uh, petal stems just ever so lightly on the bottom here. I can see just a little bit of green there. Then I'm just going to take that lighter green and then just lightly transition between the green and the yellow area underneath here. Maybe bring a bit more of this dark green in because it is it is kind of shadowed under here, but not, not a whole lot. There, and I think I'll give that a quick blend out and see how that looks. So I'm gonna grab my smaller brush here. And I'm just lightly blending everything out. And again, I always like to blend from the lighter areas to the darker areas. grab a little bit more and I'm going to dab off a little bit because now this is the second layer of colored pencil. You don't need as much OMS to blend it out as you do with the first layer. If you use too much you can actually pick up some of the pencil and move it around. So just be cautious of that. You might have to dip in and then dip it off onto a paper towel or something like that just so that you're not uh, removing the colored pencil when you want to blend it. I think I like how that looks a little better. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today and then next weekend we will come on top and uh, create some of our details in the petals here and uh, probably finish it up. So unless you guys have any last minute questions or suggestions or anything, I'm going to go ahead and end today's stream. <clears throat> and thank you guys so much for joining today. I always appreciate it. And uh, I will see you next weekend for the to finish this up, okay? Have a great day, guys.